Most people ask me this question of how learning coaching competencies are going to help me. Will I be able to get a promotion? Will I be able to get a better role? Well, the answer is not immediately. And the reason why it's not immediately possible that you can get a promotion or you can get a job role change by learning coaching competencies is, is, is very important to understand because your promotion doesn't depend only on your performance. Your performance is, a, is an enabler of your promotion or your career acceleration. But the other part that is very, very important for you to consider looking for a promotion is how potentially you are positioning yourself. How aware you are about you know your own positioning that you're going to do uh, within your teams, within your function, within your system, where your manager, your reviewing manager are able to see how aware you are, how present you are, how you know potentially placed you are to be to be very honest. Uh, you know our potential after a certain period of time in our career, say 10 to 15 years of your job, you have been growing and you have reached to a certain level, uh, what becomes even more important for you to look into is not the aspect of your domain expertise. Your domain expertise is a minimum thing which is required for your career to grow, for your career to excel. But uh, the other important element that is very, very important is your executive presence. Now you would have heard this term executive presence a lot of times from a lot of people and you would have your own definition of executive presence. But what is executive presence and how important executive presence is for you to enable that growth by controlling that growth. To enable that growth by controlling that growth means you are, you are, you are governing your promotion. You are controlling your promotion. You are controlling your next role. You are controlling your next level of increment. You're controlling everything by building your executive presence. And if I have to answer your question pretty well, learning coaching competencies is the fastest way to learn how you build your executive presence. In executive presence, executive presence is basically a manager's, a leader's capability to inspire the system, to inspire the teams, whether they are in direct control or not in direct control. But a leader's capability to create that vibration, a leader's capability to uh, discover, demonstrate, reflect that humility, that presence at work, their ability which allows them to listen better, that allows them to be more open, more flexible, to consider respect for others. Now these attributes once we start learning, we start developing our executive presence which means my performance is at X level, say I'm a top performer. My performance will grow up by 10%, 15%. I'll continue to be a top performer. But if I'll start looking at respecting, building trust, reflecting humility, creating more presence at work, building more ownership, uh, focusing on openness and flexibility, driving that culture, nobody can absolutely ignore your presence. And that is where your executive presence really helps. Now, if you go, if you basically make a choice to learn the coaching competencies which are uh, formally defined by ICF and you know various institutions across the globe various agencies across the globe are also now recommending that great leaders need to be great coaches great managers need to be great coaches organization need to inculcate the culture of coaching now when you start developing yourself as a person who focuses on his presence more, who focuses on his ability to evoke awareness among the team members, among the stakeholders, whose ability to co-create the relationship between the stakeholders, whose ability to listen actively increases, over a period of time, this person enhances their chance of getting acknowledged. And that acknowledgement is basically, you know, getting a more complex role, getting a more difficult role, an opportunity to grow. Now, that's one aspect of it. Another aspect of it is communication. Now, communication has now become a very, what you can say, very commonly used term. I've been listening to many people speaking about communication. Uh, they have developed their own definitions of communication. But majority of people, when they talk about communication, they talk about one's ability to speak. Now, when I look at it from a growth point of view, that is given. If you're not able to communicate your idea, if you're not able to communicate your thought in a very simple way, in a very clean language way, 
then definitely that is the most important skill required but does that only mean that you're good at communication when you're able to speak in simple terms when you're able to speak to uh to, to anybody with ease that's only half part of it for a minute if you look at and dissect communication communication is basically a conversation a link a relationship between two dimensions one is the sender another is the receiver now apple steve jobs was a great communicator now what made him a great communicator has both these dimensions present in his identity present in his dimension of a leader now his ability to communicate an idea through simple language is part one and his ability to listen to what others are saying is part two now great communicator is the one who has that clarity to maintain an equilibrium and equality between both these dimensions a great communicator is not just the one who has great you know speaking skills but also who has equivalently great listening skills now how coaching helps you coaching actually helps you to enhance both of them majorly the listening skill because scientifically if you see we have been given two ears and one tongue scientifically now science says science suggests that a human being at max can speak about 150 to 180 words per minute uh to express what he wants to communicate but the capability to listen is about 450 plus words per minute which means we have twice to three three times more capability to listen than to speak now we are designed like this but are we really leveraging it once you start developing yourself as a coach once you go through a very formal way of training a very formal way of developing yourself through applied coaching techniques you discover that you think you are listening but you actually find what right listening is what real listening is another aspect see we look through our eyes but we see through our brains we look through our eyes we see through our brains so imagine there is a mobile phone in my hand now what i am looking at materialistically physically is through my eyes but what i am going to do with this mobile phone is through my brain you know so i do not look at things through the brain i only look at things through the eyes i look at an image through an eye but i perceive that image from my brain now you know looking is merely having a glance at something but knowing what it is discovering what it is or defining what it is comes through a thought process similarly listening is also at different levels now listening is one part the level one of listening is hearing through ears what am i hearing through my ears is stage one of listening you know when i'm talking to you say suppose if i'm talking to you right now and there's this sound of clap your brain will register the sound of clap with what i am saying little in disturbance but surely will register this sound as well now that's hearing now what is listening then now listening is also one's capability to hear to see through one's lens and also to see through the speaker's lens now these are all advanced levels of listening uh majority of people who i meet every week and when i ask this question that how much you think you are good at listening on a scale of 10 they rate themselves at an 8 or 9 in terms of listening and they think they're great listeners but 31 people who have gone through our cohorts in last one and a half two years when they answered this question uh, during the you know during the onboarding stage they rated themselves as 8 or 10 but after going through the learning in the interim stage when we asked this question again back to them of how do you think now what is the score you are going to give yourself on listening the scores dropped from 8 or 9 to 3 or 4 that is where they discovered that what they knew about listening what they thought about listening is absolutely a very very top level understanding now executive presence your communication skills your ability to be fully present your ability to ask questions what do you think are they not important for you to make sure that you are visible that you are seen on the workplace that you're seen from the management's eyes then you're considered as more capable yeah now this balances the equation this balances the equations for all career making decisions 
your uh, career acceleration decisions after 10 15 years of your career are not made on your performance alone they are equally made on your potential to grow how potentially you are placed yeah you are a good performer great but are you a person who can enable that good performance across different stakeholders how you would actually you know deal with people del carnegie in one of his famous quotes said that to be interesting you need to be interested to be interesting you need to be interested so if you want people to listen to you if you want people to listen to you you start with listening to people if you want to be interesting as a leader if you want people to come and look at you and get inspired by you you have to first build inspiration for them so you can't be interesting if you're not interested in people now that is going to be a very important core difference in times to come and that is where role of developing oneself as a coach for coaching competencies is going to emerge absolutely at at a very you know uh, at, at a very important level so this is what uh, uh, we believe at butterfly coaching academy that one person should invest in oneself every individual who has that dream who has that vision whatever uh, career experience range you are working at today whether you are at 5 years of experience or 7 years of experience or 10 years of experience whether you come from marketing you come from technology you come from hr you come from finance you come from any any function and you you are doing any any role you know that domain expertise is, is going to contribute in terms of your performance at work but what you actually develop yourself is not just your performance alone it's your potential how do you how do you really you know enhance your communication how do you really enhance your presence how do you really enhance your uh, capability to build trust in cross functional teams how you enhance your capability to you know look at forming agreements can you think of a team achieving to a goal post or uh, achieving a milestone without coming to an agreement yeah so if i say that i have to go north and my team members say that they have to go to south do you think we can reach either of them or either of those places you know that calibration comes from one understanding to establish agreement yeah how do we form agreements with the team and that's the core competency number 3 with icf yeah and that's the most important most important competency another most important competency that we learn when we start learning the coach training module is core competency number 8 which is building accountability creating more ownership coming and arriving to an action plan now all these things are very much essential for a person to change gears to navigate through to transition through all all stages of the career growth uh, not just career growth not just the professional part but as a personal growth element as well you know you have to look into these things how great human being you are when you come at work how great individual you are when you come at a, a personal uh, relationship front now that's all gets transformed because when you walk through the path of becoming a coach you transform yourself you empower yourself you become more self aware you become more conscious of your own choices you become aware of your own obstacles you become aware of your own perspectives your own paradigms your own beliefs how you're operating and when all these things start surfacing up you start taking more control of your own self how you react how you respond and that changes the game in long term and that's 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 what i can assure you if you take up a coach training module is something that's going to be very transforming uh another aspect uh, that we need to consider right now is <clears throat> another question that comes up is what is the right time for me to start learning or developing myself as a coach you know so you know people think that coaching or learning coaching or the need to learn coaching only only comes when you become the chief operating officer or at or any at six level no my friend that's not the case actually if you ask me now now you you look at the seed the way the seed grows if you see the time stamp of a seed becoming a plant then plant becoming a tree then tree bearing the fruit it's a very very long process you first take the seed you bury it inside the soil and you just let it there with whatever is the need like light water sunshine um, you know the moderate uh, atmospheric uh, moisture that is required and you let that seed be buried in that zone for a little 
little longer and after that little longer time spent within the soil that seed starts popping up and st gradually it starts growing so if you see yourself want to become that leader if you see that dream of becoming that manager who's having a very large portfolio a very complex role a very complex team structure then you do not wait for that to happen for you to learn the program you need to treat yourself as that seed that small seed that has the power to become that tree in three years from now in four years from now and you know it's always a fight between one day and day one you know that one day never comes that one day never comes until unless we really tune our minds from uh, the perspective of one day i'm going to invest in myself or one day i'm going to learn this or one day i'm going to become this person no i need to change that perspective to you know reversing the equation from one day to day one so i have to start today increase my potential that will help me increase my presence that will help me help me increase my appeal my ability to communicate better that will enhance my communication skill that will improve my vis visibility that will improve the results that will enhance my performance and everything in, in you know in the core sequence in the very in a very harmonious way it's then that i get that what i really want a leadership role yeah so leadership role doesn't comes first before we become that leader we need to become that leader now that's a very important question so what i say typically when i meet people who who have that intent of you know i've been meeting many people over the past few years and i see that they have that desire to you know properly invest in themselves and learn those leadership skills and learn those human attributes that are required for this in, in such critical times but somehow they do not take that decision with the desire that they have something that stops them no you have to consider that you know how much is at stake so one year if you don't get promotion or your promotion gets delayed by a couple of years what is the cost of that delay now how can you really reduce the delay of that period by investing in yourself and enhancing your visibility and enhancing your skill and enhancing your potential and really doing wonder to the workplace so people look at you people get inspired by you you really start building the culture various researches across the globe done by great global agencies like uh, linkedin like harvard like many others have revealed that at least 3/4 of the managers at least 3 out of 4 managers when they leave an organization they don't leave an organization because of any organizational issue or any policy issue 3 out of 4 managers 3 out of 4 employees leave organizations because they do not find their managers to be allowing them to grow and become better in their systems no 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 major researches are saying that people leave managers people leave leaders people leave bosses and they don't leave organizations yeah would you want to reflect upon it would you want to take a pause and reflect upon and ask yourself this question as a hr leader as a business leader as a cxo that is your organization undergoing a a trouble where people are leaving and you don't have a very 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 deep rooted answer to why they are leaving are they really leaving for growth if they are leaving for growth then the question arises of how are we responsible for growing them if somebody sitting outside our organization is able to find a talent from our organization and is able to make them grow through their organizational policy then what is the problem why can't we make people grow and if not that the case is then why people are leaving now these are the questions that cannot be answered superficially that cannot be answered in a very you know looking at the surface of the water you have to dive down deep and again and again you will realize you will find that you know you can control all these things by by considering capability management of the middle lines by considering capability management of the senior managers of the of the middle lines who are responsible for performance of business metrics for performance of business numbers plus majorly responsible for the people who are getting those business numbers yeah now once you start learning developing yourself as a coach you start expanding your horizons you start expanding your perspectives you start looking at building that now this is exactly what we do this is exactly how we do we help organization build capability using icf structures icf frameworks icf core competencies through icf related programs in a very holistic way in a very rigorous way in a very robust way where you see a humongous cultural change happening through the middle lines of your leadership where they take the ownership they take the accountability they take the responsibility to work with people in a very psychological safe and 
and trusting environment where you see incredible results like retention going lower you know your churn percentages of human resources is going lower your productivity is increasing your workplace is getting better you know people are more open people are taking less number of leaves and all those positive factors really influence your business numbers you can really influence your revenue numbers your sales numbers and everything else now see it it only depends upon you know what you need to really do is to find right problem what is the right problem and address that out right problem address that root problem and the root problem is and the root problem is little unknown and at butterfly coaching academy we have been researching from past 3 4 years and i have spoken about this in my previous videos that we have created a very very simple and a very strong very robust four step model which we call it as i k a n i c a n if you pronounce it it sounds like i can it's a very positive way to look at you no know, i can but we do not say it as i c a n we say it as i k a n and this four step model at the first place allows us to find the real problem to identify the real problem because until unless we know the real problem no solution can really work for us and we work with organization very closely you know as their coaching consultant as their partners in terms of first identifying what is going wrong and how do we really discover that what the problem is do not look at the uh, the the perceived problem from the top view you know sometimes what happens is we start solving the perceived problem because we can only see the tip of the iceberg but there is a bottom of the iceberg which is which is invisible which is there which is a major major problem and we help organizations we help leaders go deep dive down and see what is the major problem and then address the major problem and you see great results coming up now this is what we really really do when we say that we are an icf accredited organization icf is a global body that has filled the coaching governance over the last 3 decades and every single thing that they do is of gold standard these competencies are of gold standards and butterfly coaching academy is one of the youngest growing coaching academies in the country uh, uh who believe in that you know robust structure that is laid by icf the gold standards that are laid by icf and that is on what we are building upon you know, we really really believe in simplifying the content we really believe in creating that ownership for our Uh, clients for our fellow coaches for our fellow partners for everyone who really touch bases with us and collaborates with us in terms of learning in terms of developing themselves now this is something that we really want to highlight now main to sales pe hu main coaching kyon seekhu mere liye kis kaam to main aapko bata do ek acha salesman bolne se zyada sunne ki capacity rakhta hai sunne ki capacity और अगर आप एक बेहतरीन सेल्समैन बनना चाहते हैं तो आपकी सुनने की कैपेबिलिटी का अच्छा होना बहुत जरूरी है और दूसरी सबसे इंपॉर्टेंट बात एक अच्छा सेल्समैन एक अच्छा सवाल पूछने की क्षमता भी रखता है सो इफ यू रियली वॉन्ट टू डेवलप दीज टू कोर कॉम्पिटेंसीज ऑफ योर एबिलिटी टू आस्क पावरफुल राइट क्वेश्चन एंड योर एबिलिटी टू लिसन to your consumer or what your consumer wants and then align your sales pitch according to the need of your consumers you need to learn coaching competencies coaching competencies are not just for the coaches to learn but coaching competencies are so fundamental that whether you do sales or any other function they are for you my friend connect to know more